I am going to do what I did last night and give folks just another minute or two to arrive and then we will get started shortly. Okay, can everyone hear me all right? Great. Good evening. It is Wednesday, June 23rd, and I am calling this public hearing to order. Orange County Schools Board of Education pledges to our families, students, staff, and the greater community to conduct our business in a courteous and productive manner, showing respect for fellow board members, staff, and citizens. The board asks its citizens to conduct themselves with the same courtesy towards all staff members and each other. Tonight, we will hear from the public about the new names being considered for Stanford Middle School. Additionally, comments submitted through our general feedback form can be reviewed by the public on the OCS website on our renaming committee landing page. Board member Doyle is unable to attend tonight's hearing, but asked me to share that she will watch the recording of this meeting in its entirety before next Monday's meeting where a decision will be made. And with that, I will now turn it over to Dr. Felder to give us a brief review of how we have arrived at this public hearing. Dr. Felder? Well, thank sure, why well, thank you and good evening, uh, Chair McKenzie, Vice Chair Stevens, all board members, staff, students, families, and members of the community. Before the board begins to hear feedback regarding the renaming of CW Stanford, I want to provide some context, some background information for tonight's public hearing. Action item number 10 in the board's equity resolution calls for the names of buildings in the district to be examined for their origin and compliance with the board's equity policy 1030. Specifically, action item 10 calls for the district to review the names of buildings in our district to examine their origin and compliance with the board's equity policy 1030. Each school-based equity team took on this task, working through the lens of the following six areas to ensure alignment to the board's equity policy 1030. Number one, does the name of the school reflect an interruption of systems, structures, policies, and practices which privilege some students while discriminating against other students? Number two, does the name of the school reflect fostering a barrier-free environment where all students, regardless of their race, class, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, religious faith tradition, family structure, geographic origin, and ability disability have the opportunity to benefit equally in order to succeed and thrive? Number three. Does the name of the school reflect every adult treating every student as capable of success and recognizes the uniqueness and strengths of each student? Number four, does the name of the school reflect countering biased behaviors 
that cause harm to specific groups? Number five, does the name of the school reflect countering unfair policies, programs, and practices that consistently result in negative outcomes for groups who are disadvantaged by these actions? And last but not least, number six, does the name of the school reflect negotiating, reallocating, and sometimes reimagining resources, opportunities, and supports when equal distribution of these things, one size fits all, results in inequitable outcomes that do not adequately meet specific needs and interests of all groups of students. Per the findings by the Cameron Park Elementary Equity Team on February 8th, the board voted to rename Cameron Park Elementary School. Per the findings by the CW Stanford Middle School Equity Team on February 22nd, the board voted to rename CW Stanford Middle School and requested a process and timeline for renaming both schools. On March 8th, the board approved the proposed process and timeline for renaming both schools. On May 10th, the board approved two revisions to the renaming schools process, the addition of meeting facilitators and for the district to have one renaming schools committee instead of two. While members of the community submitted names for both schools by an online portal, one renaming schools committee was formed, comprised of 18 people representing a diverse group of parents, staff, students, community members, and two meeting facilitators. The renaming schools committee met six times, April 20th through May 25th. At the June 7th board meeting, the following name recommendations were presented to the board on behalf of the school renaming committee. For Cameron Park Elementary School, River Park Elementary School, and Arbor Park Elementary School. For CW Stanford Middle School, Orange Middle School, Hillsborough Middle School, Poplar Middle School. Additionally, at the June 7th board meeting, a motion was made and the board voted to approve the consideration of the name Dr. Kismika Corbett Middle School for CW Stanford Middle School, bringing the total number of names for the board and community to consider for CW Stanford to four. At last night's public hearing, the board received feedback from the community regarding two names recommended for Cameron Park uh, Elementary School. Tonight, the board will receive feedback from the community regarding four names recommended for CW Stanford Middle School. The public also uh, provided written feedback through an online portal on the district's website. All board members have access to the online portal and have reviewed the written feedback. And as previously stated, the public can also access and review the written feedback. It is accessible to all on the district's website. Madam Chair, this concludes the background information on the school renaming for Cameron Park Elementary and CW Stanford Middle School. Why, thank you very much, Dr. Felder. Yeah, and now, now is the time for public comments. After each speaker has been recognized and unmuted, they will have three minutes to speak. When you hear the timer sound, please wrap up your comments. The board will not have a discussion with any speaker. No profane or vulgar language will be permitted or personal abuse against any person. Public comments should not address any specific confidential student or personnel matter. Complaints concerning any specific employee or student are not permissible during public comments. I also wanted to mention at this time that we had one comment that was submitted in writing anonymously. And um, while that comment is also available for the public to review and the board has seen it, it will not be read because for policy, I believe it's 2300, you have to provide your name and an address in order to have your comment shared in a public meeting. And with that, I will recognize our first speaker tonight, who is Jamie Pollan. Thank you, board. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Can you hear me? We can, welcome. I'll start your Thank timer you. now. I'm participating in this meeting tonight to request that the board waive policy to rename CW Stanford Middle School in honor of Dr. Kazmikia Corbett. I'm a longtime resident of Northern Orange, 
I'm a homeowner, a business owner, and a community leader. I believe fundamentally that Black Lives Matter and that it is, it is the responsibility of our community through our elected officials to make tangible gains and racial equity within our district. Symbology is hugely important to the Black Lives Matter movement. This board has made an incredibly brave, important, and anti-racist choice in choosing to rename CW Stanford. Thank you to each of you that voted in favor of that decision. Dr. Corbett's parents would not have been permitted to address this board under the rules at the time CW Stanford was the board chair. To go from having a school named in honor of an era of segregation to a black woman graduate of our district is symbolic of the commitment that this district has to children of color who have been systemically disadvantaged in educational pursuits as evidenced by measures like the so-called achievement gap, disciplinary records, and the history of integration in this district. There was an integrated prom in this district until 1990s. That means that there was a black prom and a white prom. The Central High School, the school for black students, was burned down in 1958 while Mr. Stanford was the board chair. This district didn't integrate until 14 years after Brown versus Board. Here's what Dr. Corbett means to me. Dr. Corbett means my children are able to go back to school in person because teachers are vaccinated. Dr. Corbett means I could go back to work in the court system safely to do the work of justice without fear of contracting Corbett, uh, COVID. I'm sorry. Dr. Corbett means that I can see my friends in person. Dr. Corbett means I can plan a vacation. Dr. Corbett means that me and my children can live. And most importantly, Dr. Corbett means that black students of Orange County schools can save the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Pollan. Our next speaker, our next comment is from Ashley Wheeler and it was submitted in writing and Ms. Stowe will share that now. Ms. Stowe. Good evening. This comment was provided in writing by Ashley Wheeler. I am writing in support of renaming Stanford Middle School after Kazmikia Corbett. I believe this would be a fantastic honor for a person who has graduated from Orange County Schools and pursued higher education in the service of her community. Beyond that, the name Corbett Middle School would be a source of pride and encouragement to the students. After more than a year of strife dealing with the pandemic, one of our best weapons to fight COVID-19 has come in the form of a vaccine developed in part by a black woman who called Hillsboro home. I am an ER nurse and I have the utmost respect for the fantastic scientists who have helped to quell what has been the most frightening and stressful time in my life. I respectfully encourage the board to consider this name change to Kazmikia Corbett Middle School. Our next comment is from Katrina Ramquist Wesson and was also submitted in writing. I wholeheartedly support changing the name of Stanford Middle School to Orange Middle School. As I understand it, Mr. Stanford, while involved in the education system in Orange County, supported continued segregation of students based on nothing more than the color of their skin. Mistakes are made by all of us and even people who preceded us by some generations. The best way to resolve them is to try to right wrongs the best we can, even if we didn't make the original decisions. This is a teaching opportunity for our students to learn more about the names that they see where we live and to learn more about more complete history, which is black history, including slavery. Part of that includes renaming streets, schools, and communities as necessary. And the relevant discussions are providing this greater education and righting historical wrongs wherever and whenever possible. Our next comment was submitted in writing by Maria Flanagan. As a resident of Orange County and the town of Hillsboro, I respectfully request that CW Stanford Middle School carry a name more, benef more befitting the vibrant and cultured community that it serves. The board need not focus on one priority at a time. A thoughtful, compassionate renaming can occur in tandem with other significant educational priorities. In order to continue to move beyond our racially problematic roots, we must flex into uncomfortable territory, admit our shortcomings, 
and make significant strides towards equality. We must realize that honoring a legacy of inaction is a continued injustice against our friends and community members of color and thus us all. Thank you for your thoughtful consideration. Respectfully submitted Maria Flanagan. Our next comment was submitted in writing by Janet Madry. CW Stanford has been in Hillsborough for more years than I have, 36. It is not my place or anyone else's to change the name because someone might be offended by something a person did two centuries ago. When we try to rewrite history and erase it, we are doomed to repeat it. Our history is often sad, tragic, cruel, and unfair. Let's remember it so we don't repeat it. You can change every name in this town, but you can't change what happened. Our next comment submitted in writing was from Jay Harrell. I want to address the potential names for renaming Stanford Middle School. While this endeavor isn't what I believe the board should be spending their time working on right now, this is clearly something that is moving forward. I was certainly surprised to see someone's name being suggested by the board after the community input was provided. That wasn't how this process was supposed to work based on the agreed procedures. It isn't having a school named after someone how we got here to begin with. If you name a school after a person, there is bound to be controversy at some point. There will always be critics. Someone didn't do enough. Someone said something inappropriate, et cetera, et cetera. Naming the school after a person puts an undue burden on them to live up to the high expectations that we fantasize should be represented by the person behind the name of the school. It doesn't leave any room for any mistakes to be made in the past or in the future, and that is unfair. We're all human and humans make mistakes, often unintentionally. My concern is that this district is about to spend a lot of money to make this naming change. We don't want to be here again in a few years because we realize that the namesake did something that offended someone. It shouldn't matter how famous a person is, that person is human and will inevitably be criticized for something. You can't just do a Google search for controversial tweets by any person and find a lot of reasons to reconsider your suggestion. The next comment was submitted in writing by Spring Dawson McClure. I am a parent of OCS sixth and fourth graders. I commend the board for taking this important step to rename two of our schools to remove this homage to white supremacy and segregation from our children's every day and their identity as students. As a white parent raising white kids, I am grateful for this opportunity to teach my kids why names of schools and public spaces matter. I urge our community to take this opportunity to honor Dr. Corbett and in naming the middle school after her to recognize and celebrate the brilliant leadership of black women. The next comment was submitted in writing by Garen McClure. Father of rising sixth grader, strong support for Corbett. Her work has benefited so many. Our next speaker is Mr. Patrick Mitchell. Mr. Schofield, will you please unmute Mr. Mitchell? Thank you. Um, my name is Patrick Mitchell and I'm the music teacher over at Cameron Park Elementary School. And during the last couple of weeks of school, I asked all of their students for their input as to what they wish would be the names of the school. Um, so all students through grades one through five were asked what name that they would like for their, for Cameron Park. And that was River Park, 95% uh, of the students preferred River Park Elementary as their name of choice. And the biggest problem the students had with Arbor Park was the acronym which spells apes. And the students were very animate about being called the tigers and not the apes. Um, the second part is I also asked all fifth graders, both in person and virtually about a name for Stanford. And the majority, 80% of them chose Orange Middle School because particularly because they had brothers and sisters that were already there and they talked about how both shared resources between the two schools and it was really one big campus and that was uh, their major um, major decision choice there in second place was poplar tree middle school with remaining 20 percent 
Um, I'm actually kind of curious myself being on the renaming committee that it says Poplar Hill Middle School um, because we voiced a concern having Gravely Hill and then Poplar Hill would also be rather interesting. I guess we could have the Battle of the Hills. But um, that is all I have to say is what the students themselves wanted to present to you. Thank you so much, Ms. Mr. Mitchell. We appreciate that. Our next comment was submitted in writing by Treva Woods. As an educator, local community member, and a mother of a mixed race black son, I want to commend OCSB on being able to not only navigate an unthinkable situation of the pandemic, but also taking steps to address the truth of our history in our community. True community must have an accounting of the truth that whole peoples were gravely harmed in the colonization and settling of this land we are on and then take actions to amend that harm and move forward without glorifying people in the past that were the main that were for maintaining the harmful status quo. I am grateful and proud to have my son and bonus sons go to OCS where this work is being done on many levels. When is the time to make these amends and changes? Now, it's always a good time to move forward to correct these harms. With this renaming initiative, my son can hold his head a little higher, knowing that the leaders in our school community see him and care about making this place a little more inclusive and safe for all of us. Thank you for your hard work in this effort. You have my full support, Treva Woods. Our next comment was submitted in writing by Elizabeth Raines. I am writing in support of changing the name of Stanford Middle School. This is the right time to make this important change for our community and our students. Our schools need to be places that honor and support all of the students in our district. I support changing the name to Poplar Hill Middle School. If we name the school Orange Middle, it implies that all of the students in the district go there. Kazmika Corbett certainly deserves high honors, but I think it is best to not name any school after a person during these tumultuous times. Thank you for providing the community an opportunity to be heard on these matters. Our next comment was submitted in writing by Larissa Parson. Renaming CW Stanford to better reflect the values that we hold as a community is crucial. To not do so would be in violation of the OCS School Board's Equity in Education Resolution. Our next comment was submitted in writing by Elizabeth Dean. I'm supportive of changing the name of the school. It's not canceling history to acknowledge that our values have changed and progress has been made. We can recognize the contributions of Mr. Stanford in working to improve education in Orange County while also holding our public monuments and buildings to a higher standard. If it hurts people of color to see the name of a board member during times of segregation elevated on a school building, we should take it off. I'm white and I trust the Northern Orange NAACP's guidance on this. Our next comment was submitted in writing by Amanda Shirley. We all know that America was founded with the ideals of freedom and equality and the right to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We know also that these rights and ideals have not historically been made available to all people living within the borders of our country and in fact have been intentionally held out of their reach for hundreds of years. We know that education is the key to success, that in order to pursue happiness, liberty, and equality, every one of our children must have access to a quality education. What some of us may not know is that the ability to learn well and fully is based upon our ability to learn in safety. When we are afraid, uncertain that we belong, uncertain we are safe, made to feel othered, our brains are less able to process new information and our education is compromised. We have the opportunity to make good on our declaration that America is a land of freedom and equality and that it begins by making our schools safe areas of learning for every single student. Let's name our schools not with names that carry the burdens of hate, inequality, and suffering. Names our children wear on their t-shirts and jerseys 
but with names of hope, equality, and peace. I petition that we change these school names to reflect our future and our children's future and not glorify the pains of the past. Our next speaker is Mark Dutton. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, I want to apologize to the board last night. I had a technical difficulty. But, uh, my statement is I don't I don't feel as a community uh, and you as a board are ready to make this decision. And where I was going last night is there's a lot of needs that 200,000 as the estimated Bonnie's got. And where I kind of stop is that my children in eighth, sixth grade, they've had seven different principles, uh, more more principles than they've had uh, grades at OCS. So the retention and attraction of top uh, educators is, is where I left off last night. Uh, the ESL program at CW Stanford, my daughter had her French teacher, um, Rhonda Raleigh, and, and it's the only B that she's ever gotten at uh, middle school um, with the change in the French teacher with ESL not being properly supported. The infrastructure, uh, I've mentioned this and uh, daughter Stevens is aware of it. I, I saw her at the town hall at ATS uh, a year or so ago. But where I, where I was going, and I read through a lot of policies, so I'll start going through a lot more policies. The one the 1000 series is the basic education. That's your number one goal, and that's not being met for my son. Um, and with the names, uh, my wife, I was asking her, she's been in the community for 30 years. A negative comment about any of the names or um, the famous folks that have gone through are many, they're not just one, and I'm a team guy, so it takes a lot of folks to um, get a lot of great things out here. Uh, to, to, it wasn't just Dr. Corver, um, they got where we are and back in school in the fall, but Hillsborough Middle School, that's too close to Hillsborough Element. Orange Middle School, that's my son's choice, um, and I'm just gonna leave you at that. He's got two more years. All four of our children, uh, three have already graduated from CW Stanford, so the comment that Ms. Stevens made about Northern Orange High, or Nor Northern Orange not producing uh, another female from Northern, our, our daughter, she's down. We've looked at all the females uh, and resumes to uh, conclude on only one. Uh, where I was going with this, uh, with the equity, was Okanichi Middle School. You know, the American Indians that were here and the land taken, if that's the direction you're going to go, um, would be my selection and my son would be Orange Middle School. I know it's not on the ballot, I'm just talking this through. But I, I want to, I just, the emails, there seems to be a political agenda uh, with the board that leans left. It leans towards a democratic uh, view and not towards a neutral education. And be very careful about naming someone at 35 years old. If you uh, look at Twitter and look at Otter Corbett's a statement that she's made. I'm not talking about her as a. Uh, without, that's fantastic uh, read, but. Her her political view. I'll just give you some quotes that came from Twitter. Genocide in the United States, white racism. Mr. Check Button, I'm going to have to ask you to wrap up. People. I'm going to have to ask you to wrap up. Your time is up, but you can finish your thought. Well, you're you're. Yep. You're, you're, you're talking about replacing a controversial figure with another controversial figure. And that, it, that is not the right thing to do at this particular time. And that's our statement from the Dutton family. Thank you, Mr. Dutton. We appreciate you coming out tonight. Our next speaker to be recognized is Chris Roman. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Welcome. Right. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, I just want to reiterate, I don't believe we should be changing the school names at all. It's a colossal waste of time and money, especially now. It's fiscally irresponsible to be doing this and with the increased amount of debt that we've just incurred because of COVID at all levels of government. There are much better ways to be spending our tax dollars than that will truly benefit our children's education than this type of radical activism. For instance, the county could be better served by providing transportation for Hillsborough Elementary or by providing transportation for middle school students 
or after school programs or athletics, providing support for students in areas of STEM or the arts, providing money for a math facilitator. But you clearly don't feel that same way since we're here. So you've approached every single school in the county as your process that was named after a person to do your research. And every single time it was presented as we need to know why this building is named after a person because it's policy to not name buildings after people. The research was done, the committee was formed, the names were suggested, and still you come forward and threw in a name of a person. My question to you is this, what other policy can future boards overlook in the name of activism? If 10 years down the road, there's a super majority of people on the board that believe something different from you right now, what policy are you comfortable with them overlooking? By overriding this policy, we'll put all future policy into jeopardy, period. To be honest, the prudent and rational thing to be done is nothing because the motivation behind doing this is based on a political lie. Equity does not equal equality. That being said, the evidence that was provided for these renamings were sketchy at best. Coupled with the speed of the announcement to the formation of committees left one wondering why would one move so fast? And the answer is to not give people the time to think on it and really uncover why it is being done. Is it really because there is a systematic racism in our schools and our children and parents cannot stand walking through the doors of a school somehow linked to racist or racist activities? That would be utterly ridiculous. In the 16 years I've been here, not once have I heard any child or parent or teacher or administrator say, you know what? I can't stand this school because it's named after a racist or has something to do with a racist act. No. For the most part, it was a very enjoyable experience. So why do it? It's to establish some form of control and create divisiveness in our schools. Every time I bring up, why are you doing something like this? For instance, renaming these two schools, well, it's because these resolutions we pass, that's why. Which, in my opinion, are all based off of lives. It's like you get a uh, get out of free jail card in Monopoly. You make bad decisions like this and point to your insurance policy and move forward without any regard to the community. For instance, clearly you pass board policy 9300, which states the building should not be named after people, but yet you violate the policy by adding a person's name to the CW list of options, who happens to be very controversial in and of itself. Mind you, not through your committee's discovery process, but by a fiat of a board member without any regard of the committee at all. And why does Thank this Thank you, happen? Mr. Roman. I need to ask you to wrap up, please. All right, why does it happen? Because it's pure activism and behavior and control. You guys really shouldn't be changing this. You're wasting our tax paying money and you're using it as a slush fund. Thank you very much. Our next comment that was submitted in writing is Ms. From Ms. Heather Redding. As an Orange County resident, I am in full support of renaming CW Stanford Middle School and hope that the board might give full consideration to renaming it to Kosmikia Corbett Middle School. What better way to honor a graduate of Orange County Schools and uplift Dr. Corbett's accomplishments and critical life saving work in immunology? I hope the board will consider waiving any policy that would prohibit renaming a school after a person as the contributions that Dr. Corbett has made to the medical field during this historic pandemic is something we should celebrate and acknowledge to the fullest extent. Thank you for your dedication and commitment to ensuring that structures of white supremacy and Jim Crow era policies no longer have a place in our public schools. This renaming process is a strong step towards a long overdue reckoning. I hope you will continue doing the critical work to ensure that all of our county's children receive an equitable education in schools that proudly support the accomplishments of its black, brown, and indigenous graduates. Our next speaker is Ms. Danielle Price. Thank you. While well, I commend. While I commend the committee and the board for the work that they've done, I can only wish that this much effort and time was put into all of our equity issues. As a lifelong Hillsborough resident, a former Orange County student, and a current Orange County school parent, it is mind boggling to me 
and our district says that it maintains a commitment to equity and to excellence in education, yet its actions say the opposite. It is not that I don't think that renaming the schools needs to be addressed. I just feel at this time, it does not need to be priority one with the countless other items that need our immediate attention. Getting our children back in school safe safely, equity and services provided such as AIG across our county, student achievement, discussing our declining test scores, and the vast learning loss due to the board's decisions to keep kids in virtual learning environments, despite countless recommendations from our own superintendent and scientific ex experts, to name a few. Our district has proved time and time again that we are not capable of multitasking big ticket issues like this. Therefore, the fact that school renaming has been pushed to the forefront as an action item is disheartening. I listened to Dr. Felder tonight speak about four different times this was on a board agenda, six different times this committee met especially when there have been other tangible issues that involve equity that went unacknowledged by our board for almost six months. It speaks volumes that we put priority on the name of a building versus the education of the children that the children inside are receiving. Renaming the school doesn't move the needle for anyone's child's education at all. This is a decision to appease adults and make adults feel good. And I'm tired of us doing what makes adults feel good. Political posturing and pushing personal agendas should have no place in our board. Shame on you that you are more concerned about the name on a building instead of the education that takes place inside of it. And speaking to Dr. Kazmikia Corbett's name um, specifically, I am in support of our, of our district doing something to honor her. I think the best way to honor her would be to endow a scholarship for females or for minority females in science. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Price. Our next speaker, Oh, our next comment was submitted in writing by Deborah Ryder. I am 100% in favor to change the name of Stanford Middle School to honor Dr. Kazmikia Corbett. She represents the very best of Orange County, North Carolina as a research scientist and a professional woman. Her knowledge and expertise contributed to our ability to address the COVID-19 pandemic in a successful manner. We all owe a debt of gratitude to Dr. Corbett. Sincerely, Deborah Ryder, MSW. Our next comment was submitted in writing by Linda Brown. Although I don't generally support the use of personal names on public buildings, I would support an exception renaming CW Stanford Middle School as Kazmikia Corbett Middle School in recognition of Ms. Corbett's contribution to the development of a COVID-19 vaccine that has contributed to the preservation of human life around the world. Our next comment was submitted in writing by Erica Wilmer. I love the idea of honoring Dr. Corbett by naming our middle school after her. What a wonderful way to celebrate her accomplishments as an OCS grad. Additionally, she embodies the focus of OCS, diversity as the key to our united success. And our final comment this evening is um, final speaker, excuse me, is Mr. Ben Banks. Mr. Sheffield, are you able to find that? name or phone number? I'm not seeing them on the uh, attendee list. Good also. We do have a call in user. I can't identify who they are. Though. The phone number doesn't look like it matches. But we certainly could unmute and ask. Let's do that to be sure. Will do. Mr. Banks, were you just unmuted? Do you are you there? Okay, well, I think that user is not there. Um, so that concludes our public comments.
Before we close, I just want to thank the board for your unanimous vote to research the names of schools last September, as well as the renaming committee and staff for all of your work getting us to this public hearing. And I look forward to further discussion next Monday night. So with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? Chair, this is Brenda Stevens. I moved that we adjourn the meeting. Second. 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 I have a motion for Ms. Stevens and a second for Ms. Moore. Mr. Atherton? Aye. Ms. Hauser? Aye. Vote yes. Ms. Moore? Yes. Ms. Smiley? Yes. Ms. Stevens? Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you everyone for coming out. We appreciate you. Have a great night.